Hello and welcome to this introduction to Pearson Progress. So my name is Ben Swift. I'm a digital product manager at Pearson and it's been a really good couple of years working closely with BTEC schools, colleges uh, all around the world, including in the UK, Middle East, a Asia and, and Europe and uh, East Africa to develop Pearson Progress. And Pearson Progress is going to be transformative for BTEC, moving us from a process which has at its roots uh, very much a paper-based way of doing things to a new digital first way of doing things, taking everything that we've all learned from dealing with the pandemic and just bringing us up to date. Hi, my name's Tom Howell. I'm going to be delivering your training today. I've been delivering BTEC for about 13 years in the music and music technology sector at level two and level three. I'm a standards verifier and examiner, and I've also been involved in qualification development and assessment writing within that sector. I also deliver training for Pearson in music and music technology, as well as for BTEC's digital products. And I'm really looking forward to delivering this training for you today on Pearson Progress. So in this video, we'll go through the benefits and the features of Pearson Progress. We'll talk a little bit about how to get started with it, creating users, creating courses and that kind of thing. And then we'll go through some of the main assessment features and how to use those as well, both from the teacher's point of view and from the point of view of the learner and using different devices. So what is Pearson Progress? Pearson Progress is a bespoke and complementary workflow system for the whole BTEC experience from the beginning of a course all the way through to the end. And it's used by uh, us in Pearson, by you as teachers, assessors and uh, centre managers, and also by your learners. So all three parties can work together and collaborate for the benefit of learners inside Pearson Progress from one end of the BTEC journey all the way through to the other end. And this is part of our transformation to a digital first way of doing BTEC and it will be the way to do BTEC in the future. So a bit more about the features and benefits for you as teachers, assessors and managers. Progress is designed to save a lot of time for you. Uh, we do that by building into Progress a lot of the data that you need. So qualification names, unit names, qualification structures and assignment briefs uh, and um, other documentation and processes. So. So with all that pre-populated, it saves a lot of time for you, reducing your workload, but also taking a lot of the worry out of delivering BTEC because it removes the opportunities for small mistakes. It saves a lot of time in terms of what you have to check because we've done that checking for you. Pearson Progress also manages the interaction with your students. It notifies them of deadlines and assignment briefs when they're issued in the first place. And it really facilitates them not missing a deadline, always being able to hand in their work, no matter where they are, whether they're able to come into your school in person, whether they're, they're miles away uh, and um, whatever their circumstances, as long as they can access a, a website, then they can do what they need to do to be assessed. And once you have assessed your learners, you can see their progress accumulating towards their, their qualification in, in a tracker inside progress, which again is designed by us. So as you mark each individual assessment, we're doing the work to total up that, that, those unit grades from those assessments as you mark them. Also inside progress, there's an awful lot of resources already. So there's a, uh, there's a document library in there containing all of the uh, lesson plans and um, uh, templates and so on that you need. And it is a very convenient way to find them. And finally, the, 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 the platform as a whole, it, because it's got Pearson, uh, you and your learners all, all in one uh, platform, one work environment, working together in real time, you can be confident that you can continue working flexibly um, in a location independent way uh, with, with no continuity issues.
And what about your learners? Well, the benefits for your learners are that progress clarifies whatever they need to do for the relevant assessment using it, it displays them in a very convenient way the assignment brief but also the assessment criteria and it gives them access to the unit specifications and everything else they might want to refer to if they want to dig in deeper uh, it also reminds them of submission dates uh, taking into account any extensions you want to give them so they're prompted to always meet those deadlines and it enables them to upload evidence in order to meet those deadlines from wherever they are on any internet ready device okay so now let's take a look at Pearson progress okay Tom so if you could please go to learninghubprogress.pearson.com Okay. Learninghubprogress.pearson.com. That's the URL or the address for anything you need to do here. And now you are now a, um, a manager or a leader in the school. Okay. With some kind of managerial responsibility. And um, so if you could log in as a, as a centre manager. Okay. So I'm using a password and username that I've already got. So what I'd like to like you to demonstrate now is how to invite new users at your school uh, to join you and, and collaborate together in Pearson Progress. So we'll do that first for a teacher and then we'll do that for a group of learners. Okay, yeah, of course, Ben. So the first thing that you need to do is um, invite other users. So as you can see here, I'm logged in as a manager. So I'm going to go down here in my menu on the left-hand side, and I can go down to user management. When I click on there, that'll give me uh, the option to have a look at um, uh, managers that are already there and ones that are already in my, in my center. I can filter these out using these filters here so I can view them by role and by their status and I can also do dynamic search there. So I can search for Ben and you can see I can see all the learners and managers and teachers that are called Ben. So if I want to invite new users though, up here in the top right hand corner you can see the blue box it says invite users. I click on the plus sign and then I need to invite, uh, put the data in. So I can invite them individually, and I'm going to do that by sending an email. So I'm going to add a new teacher to my center. So I know their email address already. So I just need to enter the email address here, and I need to set what role they are, and I'm going to send that role as teacher, and I'm going to send them an inv in invitation link. I then get a notification to say that's done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, swat, switch over to my emails and I'm going to show you what that person sees. Okay, so this is what happens when you've been invited to join Pearson Progress. As you can see, I've got an email here. So I'm going to click on that email and it says it's got my email address and it tells me that I've been invited to use Pearson Progress using this particular email address. I'm going to now click on Go to Progress. That will take me directly to the Pearson Progress platform. Now this email address has never um, signed in before. You might have an email address that you've used for Edexcel Online or other Pearson programs because that's part of the single sign-on. If you have, you can sign in using those details here. This one is a new account so I'm going to have to click on New to Pearson and Create Account. You need to put in the email address that you were uh, sent the invitation on. And then you need to set up your username. That can be anything that you want. Um, you can have it as the same as your email address. I'm not going to. Um, you can't use spaces, so I'm going to use underscores. And then you need to create a password. And then enter your name, your country, and your date of birth in the format year month, day. Agree to the terms of use and then create the account.
you get a notification your account has been created and then you can continue. At this point, you can add your mobile phone for extra uh, verification. You can choose to skip that if you want to. Um, it gives you a reminder, I'm going to skip it this time. You can choose to do that if you would like for multi-factor authentication. And then I'm just waiting for that account to be created by Pearson Progress. And here I am in the uh, in, on the Pearson Progress landing page. <clears throat> you can see that I'm in the same center. I've got my login details there and I've got my status as teacher. And you'll notice that as a teacher, you have slightly different options in the menu bar. Okay, Ben, yeah, so that was how I invited an individual learner or member of, uh, student or member of staff or teacher. But um, understandably, you might have more than one student that you want to invite. So that's where the bulk invite learners bit comes in useful. So you just go to this um, button here instead of inviting individually, and you've got the three steps that you need to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is download the invitation form. So I click on the button here. And you can see that it has downloaded it for me down here. I'm going to open that file up and this is what it looks like. So it also has instructions on the form itself. I'm going to paste in the email addresses for my learners. Now you can also do this where you might export um, a file from your information management system at your center um, and you just need the email addresses. You can paste them in here. Then I'm going to save that document and um, I need to upload it. So there's a couple of ways that I can do it. I can either browse my files or I can just drag the form in. So it's probably in my download section. So I'm going to go to downloads. There it is. So I click on there, click on open. It's going to update upload the file and you can see it's validated it and it said that there are 10 learners. I'm going to send the invitation and then that's done. So those 10 learners email addresses will now all have an invite and they will have to go through the same process that I showed you earlier on where they'll have to create an account um, and then they will be added to Pearson Progress to your centre. Okay, Tom, so as a center manager, the first thing you need to do other than invite your, your colleagues as, uh, as users to progress is to set up what we call program templates. So if you could go to program manager. Okay. Yeah, so as a program manager, I've got more options here in my toolbar. So I'm gonna to go to program manager here. And that will take me to the page where I can set up, as you say, these program templates. As the screen loads, you'll see that there are lots of different templates here. Now, this is because we're in a training center, so we've got lots of different um, things that are already here. You probably will not have any of these on there. If you do have a few and they've already been set up, then you can filter um, and have a look by subject and who's created them and level. And you can also search directly. So if I want to look for any music templates that have already been created, I can search for them there and I can see that some will arrive. But you asked me to set up a new program template. So at the top right hand corner of the screen, you can see that I've got this blue rectangle with create new program template. I'm going to click on that. And it now brings me through to this, this workflow that I can go through. And I need to select different options as I go through. Now, as I've said before, we have access to every single qualification here. So we've got quite a busy screen. You probably won't have as many things on your screen. Um, and you can hide and show the qualifications within that area. So depending on the size of your center, you might only have a couple of these and within them, you might only have a couple of courses. I'm going to demonstrate today using the international level two, the new ones that are starting from 2022. So I'm going to open that menu and seeing as I'm a music specialist, I'm going to use music as my subject. So remember at this point, I'm the manager creating the template for other people to use. So I'm going to go right down to the bottom of my screen. Again, this would probably be less of a, a scrolling down uh, scenario for you in your centers. And I'm going to click on next in the bottom right hand corner. 
At this point, I need to choose the qualification. Now, it just happens that within music, there is only one qualification to choose. In some sectors, there might be more than one within the subject, but we're going to choose music and next. And now I can choose the size. So I've got three options available for me for this, and I'm going to choose the certificate. That's the most common qualification size to use at level two. So now I've got the combination of units at this point. Um, you can see that Pearson Progress knows some of the combination of units that I need. So it knows that Group A, there is a mandatory, um, and then we've got some from Group B and Group C. And I've got um, the ability to see them all here. Um, and I've got the ones that have already been selected. What I need to do is just double check whether my rules of combination have been met. And to do that, Pearson Progress will guide you all the way through. So at the point of use, it gives you the necessary links to the Pearson website that are required. So if I click on this hyperlink here that says specification, in a new tab in my browser, you can see that Progress is opening the specification for me. And there we go. And so I know that it's page 18 for this rules of combination. Um, and progress has remembered this from the last time I was viewing this PDF. So this is a PDF version of the specification and I'm viewing it within progress. So a nice feature is that Pearson progress will give you the resources that you need at the point of use. So I'm having a look at the level two certificate, and I can have a look at what the rules of combination are. So progress already recognized that there was one mandatory unit, and it tells me that I need to complete four optional units, two that are 30 guided learning hours and two that are 60 guided learning hours. So once I've checked that, and I can have a look through the list here, I'm just gonna close this tab and return back to my, um, program manager where I'm creating the new program template. So now that I've checked the rules of combination, I know that I need to create two of these from group B and two from group C. Now I'm going to decide that this course is going to be a music technology course. Um, so I'm going to have my optional units from group B to be introduction to recording unit three. And, um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do unit four or unit five. And so at this point, I can open another PDF to look at this specific unit. So perhaps I don't have the equipment. I'm not sure if I've got the equipment for live sound unit five. So I'm going to click here. And again, in a new tab, it's going to open up that part of the specification for that unit. So here I've got the PDF for just that unit. I can read the unit in brief. I can read the introduction and you can see on my screen, it's only eight pages. So it's not loaded the entire specification this time, which is really, really good. And I can read through a summary of the unit. I can look at what it is that I need to have as my assessment approach and the kind of learning aims learners need to do. Now I might decide here that actually this isn't something that we can do in our center, but I think that's a really nice feature as a, um, as a teacher in, uh, using Pearson Progress, it's a really nice feature to be able to look at that unit before I do that rules of combination and set up the template for my course. Okay, so now that I've gone through and I've checked the pages of the specification for, for unit five, I've decided that's probably not right for our center. So I'm gonna add unit four, introduction to door production. And then, like I said, as this is a music technology course, um, we're gonna add our 260 guided learning hour courses. So let's go for technology in music performance. And we're going to have um, remixing music. So I've, I know I've got a few DJs and producers in my, in my cohort, so they're gonna really like that. I might also know that I've got a student who's really into um, film music and from maybe some of the work I've done with them before they started at Key Stage 4, I'm going to add um, this one for this particular unit. Now you'll notice that takes me over the 240 guide, guided learning hours, but that's a really nice uh, feature of Pearson Progress. You can keep that flexibility so that all the students will do uh, group A, group B and uh, unit uh, nine, but it will give some st one student the option to do that one. I can have that flexibility built in, even though we're using Pearson Progress. Okay, so I've selected my units for the template and um, I'm just gonna scroll back up a little bit. So you can see we, we've got all of that stuff in there. We've got a combination of units and now I'm gonna click on next and it's just gonna ask me what's the program template going to be. So 
You can use that for courses. You need to make sure it's something that your colleagues are going to recognize. So I'm going to call this course BTEC International Level 2 Music Technology with Film. That way, when my colleagues come to use this template to create a course, they'll know that this is the template that involves the option of learners doing film music. Now, this is um, a declaration that we need to do, and this is why it was important that I check the specification, because I have to do a declaration that I've checked those rules of combination. So I have done, and I'm going to tick that there. I get this summary page here. Um, I can still, at this point, look at the entire specification or look at the unit specification. And now if I'm ready, I can either save and finish or save and create course. If I save and create course, that's going to take me on to create a specific um, version of this course for learners. I'm just going to save and finish at the moment, and then that saves that as a template that can be used at any time by my colleagues in my centre. Thanks, Tom. So now let's take a look at the second part of creating programs and courses. So uh, what I'd like you to do is find that program template that you just created and then go ahead and create a course based, uh, based on that program. Okay, yeah, that's no problem. So, um, like I said, this is our training platform, so there's lots of courses and, and things on here. You might have less in your center. Um, I did mention that you can filter, so we're going to click on filters here, and I can filter by subject. So, um, we're going to go for music and created by, and hopefully my name will pop up here me, um, and I'm going to apply. And here we can see the music courses that have been created by me. And here's my course here. So you can see that it was, um, I can drop down the menu here and I can see the contents of that course and just double check. That's definitely the course that I've just made. Then using the three dots here to create the menu, I could delete that if it's something that I don't want to do. So there's the course there in the program template. Again, I can get rid of those filters, and if I wanted to just search for it, I can do it by unit, qualification, or program title. I'm going to type music technology, and that's another way of finding that program. So, um, like I said, that is a, a program template created by um, a manager in the center. And now we're gonna create a specific iteration of that course, so one for each year. So in the top right-hand corner, I click on, again, the blue rectangle for create new course. And we start with the program. So we're going to use one of the programs that I've just created. So again, we can use the same filters and search features. So if I look for music technology, music technology, then I can see the different courses that are here. And here's the one that I've just created, which I called music technology with film. So I can double check that it's the course that I would like to see. If it is, I'm going to select that. Now at this point, this is when we're going to add teachers to the course. You'll remember at the start of this video, I invited certain teachers and I also have some students that I need to, to invite. So I'm going to select the teachers. So Here's the teacher that I invited earlier. So I'm going to add this teacher to the course. There may be several, depending on the size of the course, um, that you want to add, and you can search them here. You can see the teachers that are selected. And when you've selected all the teachers necessary for the running of that course, you're going to click Next. Once that's done, we're going to add our learners. So we've done the bulk upload for our learners and you have to make sure that these learners are registered on the qualification when the course starts. So I've got one learner here and um, I've created a learner account for you as well, Ben. I think that's the correct one. Um, so and then let's add another learner. So there are my learners that are in my course.
And now I need to sort out the dates and titles of when this course is going to run. So let's just say that this is a, uh, a course running over two years. It's going to run from um, January 2022. And um, it's going to finish in December 2023. It's going to be a full-time course. Obviously you've got these different options that you want to, but I'm going to run this as a full-time course. And now I'm going to give the course a title. And just a little tip as somebody who's uses, uses this, it's quite tempting to call it your, your year 10 class or your year 11 class, but actually it's much more useful if you name the cohort the year. I'm going to call this music technology 2022 to 2023. And that way it's easy for me to find the course um, rather than if I just called it year 11, because obviously my year 11s will change every year. Um, again, it gives me this overview. So still double checking. Have I got the right teachers? Have I got the right staff in? At this point, I can save it as a draft or I can save and publish and that will publish it to be able to be used within my center. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now that we've come here, this time I'm going to use the filter instead of the search. And if I look for music, at level two, then I should be able to see there's my course there. It's in progress, it's full time. I can see what the course is made up of. And using these three dots, I can then go to some of the quick menus that I need. Thank you, Tom. And I can see there that the course is uh, in progress and a full-time course at the moment. And um, I suppose you would need more than one teacher usually on a course because, you know, BTEC needs internal verification. So you have to have other teachers, even if they're not directly teaching, uh, you would have to have further teachers so that you could support each other and um, uh, do that sort of peer review activity. Yeah, that's correct. So um, I can also edit that here at this point. So you're right, Ben, I have forgotten to add a, a, another teacher to do the internal verification. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on the edit icon. And now I can add another teacher. So um, uh, Alan is the teacher that I need to add for this music course. And I'm going to save changes. And so you can see that everything is editable. Um, and now I can have a look at the course and we can see that I've got the two teachers there and the four learners. That's perfect. And now I think we'll go on and take a look at what a teacher would do in progress. Okay, thank you, Tom. So I can see now that you're logged in as a teacher. I can see that because top right on your screen it does say teacher and on the left of your screen you've got a shorter menu there so as a teacher you can create assessments and see grades and some other things but you can't create new programs and you can't manage users so what i'd like you to demonstrate now if, is if you could make an assessment for that course which we were just looking at okay do it for all learners on the course go ahead yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ben. So yeah, the first thing a teacher will normally do once we're starting our course is think about the assessment. So we're going to go to assessments here in our menu. And um, you can see there's no assessments that have been created for my courses at the moment. So I'm going to have to create and plan an assessment. So I click on the top right hand corner there and it starts the process starts with the assignment brief. Now I've got authorized assignment briefs that have been all uploaded onto Pearson. Um, so when it's the first time running through a course, um, as a you know, as someone who's delivered quite a lot of BTEC courses, I would always recommend using the authorized assignment briefs to start with. These are assignment briefs that have been checked and written by experienced standards verifiers and double checked by the senior standards verifier for that qualification. So I can just go through the filters. We've got every single one for every course on this 
um, version of uh, Pearson Progress. So I can go to the filters and, and filter by subject or who's created them, etc. cetera. Um, but what I'm gonna do is go to search. I know that I wanna start off with a unit called Door Production, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation. And I can see there, there is one assignment brief for this unit and it's the authorized assignment brief. So I'm going to select that. Now I can now select the courses that I'm associated with. You can see that as a um, teacher, I'm associated with two courses. So there's the music certificate and there's also the music technology course. I'm gonna do the music technology course, which we just set up and just to double check, I can drop that down and I can see that it does have all the units that I added before. So I've confirmed that that's the course I want to associate this assignment with. I'm gonna click select. And now I need to add my staff. So I'm going to have myself as a teacher and Alan Ross to do the quality assurance. Once I've got the teachers in place, you may have more than two teachers. If it's a, a large qualification, I'm going to click next. And now I'm going to add the learners. So I can see all the learners that have been associated with this course. Remember, I did that in the course manager section earlier on. So these four learners, I'm going to add all and you can see they've all been added to this assignment. Now, it might be that some not all learners are doing this particular assignment. Remember, when I set up the course, I allowed some flexibility so that some learners would do some units and some would do, do different ones depending on their pathway. That's quite common in the creative sector. Um, but for this particular unit, everyone on the course is doing that um, assignment. So click on Next. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the dates. So this is, they've had a period of teaching and learning where they've got all the skills. And for this particular assignment, they need to create a track and do some annotations. Normally I'd give them half a term, but just for the process of this, um, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna give them one day. So it's a very short assignment for them. So generally you would have maybe a term, term and a half of teaching and learning, and then a short um, assessment window. And now, um, but like I said, this isn't a realistic period of time for our learners, but it just helps with our demonstration today. I'm going to give my assignment a title. So it's, um, it's about creating a track. Um, and you can see that it's already given it the title here, um, the youth TV theme. So I'm just going to use that one. So youth TV theme, that's the title that's going to appear on the authorised assignment brief. I can also at this point have a look at the um, summary information for the assignment. I can click on this icon here to see the unit specification. So again, an example of Pearson Progress helping you at the point of need. I've got the learning aims covered and I can show more information underneath so I can see the assessment criteria for those learning aims. And then I've also got the assignment description the teachers and the learners associated with it. I can save this as a draft if I'm not sure if there's anything else to edit, but I'm confident that this is the right assignment at the moment and I've got the dates right, so I'm going to save and publish. And now you can see in my assessments, I've got an assessment there, I've got the assessment title, I know there's a deadline approaching, it's in progress and which unit it pertains to. Okay, Ben, so um, as a teacher, I've just set my assignment and it's due this week. So I created the assignment and I've set it to my learners. So could you just go through what a learner sees and how they'd be able to hand their work into me? Yep, here we are. So I'm logging into Progress as a learner and I'm using my smartphone, uh, which is what the majority of learners will do, at least in the first instance. Now we can see a screen similar to what we saw on Tom's screen, but laid out slightly differently due to the smaller screen on this device. Um, we can also see the same sort of style of menu, but in this case, uh, firstly, it's compressed into that um, uh, icon at the top of the screen. And secondly, it's an even shorter menu than Tom had as a teacher, which in turn was shorter than what he had as a manager. Uh, and here, as a learner, I've got access to my grades and my assessments, which is where I'm going to go now. So here we are in my assessments, and in this particular account, I've got loads and loads. Normally, a learner would have very few. 
and I'm going to just filter to find the one which is ready to hand in. So here we can see deadline approaching and uh, some information about the assignment that Tom has set me. So I'll click into there. Okay, so the deadline is the 8th of March. And I can see different tabs here, assessment feedback, where it hasn't been marked yet. And I can see my work and the assignment brief itself. What I'm going to be assessed against. And the assignment brief itself. Okay, so today's a deadline, so I better hand in some work. So I'm going to select files from my device. And here we can see I've, I've got some files which I'm, I'm going to upload. Just very quick. Okay, so I'm going to upload three files of three different types, which I already had ready. And I'm also going to record a short evaluative discussion to say how, how I did in this assessment and uh, upload that video also. Okay, so as a learner, I've been notified about the deadline. I've done some, I've handed in some of the work that I've been doing. I've also recorded some uh, video of my live performance. And as, as I upload this work, I could be uh, on the bus on the way to school or on the, in the same town or on the other side of the planet from my teacher. And all that is fine. So hopefully, I will never miss a deadline. And it's as easy as that. So now I can visually confirm that I've uploaded my files. And I can, by the way, upload any number of files here. And the maximum file size for each individual file is 15 gigabytes. So that video I just recorded could be very lengthy and it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, and I, I've got, uh, uh, these files happen to be PDFs, but uh, that's an MP3. I, I can upload almost any file type. And uh, moreover, I can uh, preview almost any file type inside here. So that can reduce the need for specialist software. And uh, um, I can preview full screen, play various files without needing to download them uh, and so on. Okay, so my assessor has been notified that I've handed my work in. And uh, at midnight tonight, when this deadline hits, I will no longer be able to see the upload option here, unless my assessor gives me an extension. Okay, so Tom, I'd like you now to go to assessments and uh, let's see how it is as a teacher marking uh, the work. Okay, thanks Ben. Yeah, as you say, I'm logged in now as a teacher, so I'm going to go to my assessments. Um, for this particular teacher, there's only one assessment that I'm associated with at the moment. I can see that the deadline is due in shortly, so I'm just going to have a check and see what my learners are doing and whether they've handed anything in. When I click into the assignment, I can see a bit more detail and information. So I've got the summary at the top, which gives me everything that I need to know. And again, these are all fully editable by just clicking on the pencil icon. In this first menu here, I can see the information that we had at the start. So I can, when I set the assignment up, up I can see the unit. I can look at the unit details. And I can look at the assignment brief itself. This can be previewed. I can go to live view and I can zoom in. So um, all the information that I need at the point of needing it. But now we're going to check on our learners. So I'm going to go to learners and evidence. I can see here the four learners and I can see the work that Ben has submitted. But the other three learners haven't handed anything in yet. 
Now I'm aware of an issue as to why this learner isn't going to hand anything in. So I'm going to give them an extension. And that's really simple to do in progress. I click on the three dots here. I add an extension. I'm going to give them an extra week. And the reason why is because they're off with chicken box. So that learner there you can see has automatically been given that extension. So let's go and have a look at the evidence that Ben submitted. So I click on see evidence. And here I've got a preview of Ben's work. I can see his report that he's done, the screenshot of his final project, the MP3 of the track that he handed in, and I've got the video of his valuation there. Now what's really nice as a uh, teacher is on the same screen I can have his work and I can also have a look at the, um, the learning outcomes that I'm assessing against. And I can look at the detail here and give them comments on each particular assessment criteria. Um, and then a general comment at the end. The other thing that's really nice to do is if I go into the learner work and preview it, I'm now able to annotate and comment within the same window. So I can have my feedback area on the side here, I'm able to resize it. I can drop the feedback area out and just look at the learner work here. So perhaps I want to add a comment about this sentence here. And perhaps here is some evidence of him um, analyzing. So I'm going to click in here and tell him that at this point, this is where I've seen him analyzing his work. I'm also able to annotate by using a drawing tool. So you can see it's really useful. I can download and print from here as well. I can see a summary of the learner work, we've got the video, and all of these files work within progress. Let's get the feedback section up again. And now that I've gone through, marked and annotated the learner work, I can say whether these bits are met or not met. So he's met A point P1, he has selected and developed them. So at this point, I would leave a comment for the purposes of today's um, video. I'm just going to write the word comment, but you would, um, I would write here where he has achieved in his learner work, where he has achieved this particular grade. So Ben's done very well. And for learning aim A, he's got a distinction. And for learning aim B, because it's a funneled unit, he's got a distinction for B point D1, and so he must have got a distinction for these two as well. Then I'm going to leave him his general comment. I'm going to say that I've checked that that's okay and that there's no plagiarism and it's his own work. And I'm going to save feedback. You can see up here that it gives me a notification that the work has been saved. And now I've got a thing, a, a notification here that is one of four learners assessed and I can go through and do each learner one at a time. And obviously this learner hasn't done their work yet. Let's go up to the top of the screen and go back to the assessment. And now I can see a summary of Ben's work that it's been submitted, it's been assessed, it's his first attempt and he got a distinction. Um, it's also worth noting that if you want to mark offline, once the learners have handed everything in, if you didn't want to do it online like that, you can download all evidence and you can then mark it in your own time and come back and fill this out. So that's what it looks like as a, as a, um, a member of staff or a teacher, an assessor, when you've seen the learners hand in all of their Thank work. Thank you, Tom.
Uh, and there's just one more thing to do, and that is to issue the feedback just to Ben. So I think you can see an orange dot there yeah. above the word assessed. Yeah, so so that's right. So once I've assessed it, obviously the uh, feedback doesn't go directly to the learner. There's still something built in so that we can we can double check. So once that's been done, the feedback status there says I can issue the grade to the learner and make it visible. So in order to do that, I click on um, the three dots here again, and I click on issue grades. It now says before issuing grades, you need to declare that internal verification requirements have been met. So I'll certify that that has happened and issue the grades. So internal verification <coughs> also happens within Pearson Progress on another, um, another tab up here. And this is where we would upload the reports for this unit. And as it says here, this won't be visible for students. So now that I've issued the evidence, oh, sorry, wrong, uh, wrong tab. Now I've issued the evidence back um, and you can see it's been issued. The feedback has been issued back to Ben. Um, ben, let's go back to you and see what you see as a learner. Okay, so here I am as a learner again, and I've gone to the assessment screen. That's one of two ways to see how well I did on that assessment. So I'll go back to the assessment and I can immediately see my grade at the top and I got a distinction, which is great news. So let's dig into that and see a bit of detail. So here I can see that I uh, achieved learning aim P1. There's a green tick there, um, a criterion P1, I should say. And I've got a very short comment from my teacher, Tom. Uh, likewise, these other criteria here. Learning aim B, I also got a distinction, so yes, I'd expect to see a green tick by every criterion below. And I wonder if there's any annotations inside my work. I'll just have a look. And I can see some additional comments there from, from Tom, my teacher. So that's great. So I'm really pleased with my results on that. And now I'm going to see how my results on that individual assessment is affecting my progress through the course towards my qualification. So I'm going to come here to my gr grading section. Select the course. And I can see that uh, I've got achieved 13% of the course so far. And that 13% is one unit out of these units, which Tom added to the course earlier. Most of them are in progress, but it's this unit four that I've actually, with that one assignment, has meant that I've achieved the whole unit. And I can see here which criteria I've met. I can see what the criterion was and what Tom's comments were. And then from this progress tracker screen, I can actually go back to the original assessment by clicking go to submission and see how that feedback relates to the, the actual work. Okay, so again, from anywhere using any device, I'm able to very quickly see my my, my results, my feedback, and how they, the results of that assessment have impacted on my, my progress through the course as a whole. Okay, Tom, now we've uh, now we've marked Ben's work. Uh, Ben's seen his results, I think, as a teacher. It would be good to see how Ben's doing and the rest of his course are doing as they progress through the qualification. So we can do that by going to the grading screen and seeing the tracker. Yeah, so um, I'm going to go across here to grading in my menu. And then I can choose the course that I want to have a look at. So I'm currently teaching on these three courses at the moment and Ben is in this bottom one here. So I'm going to select this course. 
And now I've got two views. You can see up here I've got a summary view and a unit view. We're going to start with a summary view. So this is where I can see all the learners in this group and I can see there's that distinction grade that I gave Ben earlier on and I can see his grades across the whole course. Not just Ben's grades across there but I can see all of the students that are in this class. Now you can see here that I can edit grades. So Let's imagine that we're in a situation where I've moved on to Pearson Progress halfway through this qualification. We've already got uh, Unit 6 has been marked and feedback has been given. So I'm going to give the learners their, um, their grades. So uh, for Unit 6, this is actually the, um, the Pearson set assignment task, but um, we're going to give them their grade here. So um, this has been marked previously. So I can manually give them those grades. And also I did um, recording last year with them as well. So it doesn't matter if you're joining halfway through. I'm going to save those changes. So like I said, if you're joining on Pearson Progress halfway through teaching the course, you still have that functionality. Um, and then here's where it pulls through the automatically graded online uh, unit grade. You can see there's this icon here to just show that it's a manually added grade. So that's how I can look at the summary view. Now I'm going to look in a little bit more granular at the unit view. So I want to see how my learners have done on unit four. Perhaps you've got more than one teacher on the course and you just want to have a look at how students are performing in your unit. Or if you're a, uh, a manager, you want to have a look at how learners are performing in a particular teacher's unit that they're, they're uh, delivering. So here I can see this is just for unit four. I can see how the learners have done. Um, I can preview here and I can see which ones they've met. If I'm not exactly sure what A.M1 is, again, Pearson Progress will help me because it will um, give me the information as to what that um, assessment was about. And I can see that Ben's done really well and he's met all uh, seven of the criterion. That's the grading window for a teacher. So you can see it's really useful in terms of tracking uh, learner progress. Okay, so uh, another feature that's uh, nice on the grading screen is I can go here and I can have a look at um, how Ben is performing by clicking on this icon here. And this gives me a bit more detail about his progress on the course. So you can see it's similar to the information that Ben had. I can see the percentage of progress that he's made. I can look at his unit grades. And then let's have a look at this unit that we've been looking at at the moment. So I can see that he's got a distinction. If I dropped that down, I can have a look at a little bit more information. I can see his feedback here, um, a very useful comment. Um, I can look at which criterion it um, is talking about. Um, and then also because he's handed some work in, I can have a look at the, the grade. So I can click on this icon and this hyperlink will take me straight to that assessment where I can then look at all the information that I had previously. So that's just another really good way of showing how as a teacher you can get to all the information that you need when you need it. So um, that is uh, using the grading from the teacher's perspective in Pearson Progress. I hope you enjoyed watching our demonstrations of Pearson Progress. As you can see, it's very intuitive to use. Uh, it's a quite, it's, it, it simplifies the BTEC journey. It's a lot simpler, we believe, from, from working with the teachers and learners that we have worked with to develop it. It's a lot simpler than, um, than the paper-based way of doing BTEC. However, intuitive a digital system is there's always going to be questions occasionally about how to use it so we've got a, a dedicated page on the Pearson's qualifications website there's an awful lot of guidance on there printed user guides and short how-to videos so however you want to learn about progress you should be able to find the, the best way for you um, and also Pearson customer services, they're there for you. They're trained uh, to use Pearson Progress themselves and they, they can log in and, and help you uh, on the phone uh, or through video calls to, to assist you. So it just remains to say thank you very much from Tom and from me, Ben, for watching this video and we look forward to helping you use Pearson Progress. Thank you very much.